I don't think killing himself was planned to that extent, though. It was a reaction to the Twitter shit. You, we don't know that. We have no idea if that's true. <sighs> Ugh, what's up, my duders? What a fucking morning. Holy shit. We consider reaching out to Becca to see if she's like right. I'm not like friends with Becca. I feel like she's probably got like a million people that are all damning her. Like, oh, are you okay? Um, um, thoughts on Ella? Thoughts on everybody? I don't like to talk about. I don't like to talk about people dying because I don't know like how much is like me like just having a negative view of people versus me being a little bit cold or inhuman or whatever. Um, I I don't know. I think I don't know. I, I, I'm gonna. I think the most human answer that I can give is people grieve in their own ways. It feels a little bit weird when everybody starts like posting pictures and apparently he's like... I ever noticed if, you, if you're ever looking for a lot of best friends, the best thing you can do is die because after you die, dude, everybody apparently was either in love with you or your best friend or some shit. It's pretty fucking crazy, but I, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm, just don't talk about it. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Wreckful killing himself is, is pretty sad. Um, yeah. He was a, uh, yeah, he was a really, 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 truly mentally fucked person. Um, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how somebody would save somebody um, that was that deep um, into depression. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't think it was bullying. Like hot takes, cold takes. I don't think it was bullying online that made him do it. I don't think it was Rem's tweet or people being mean on LSF or not having Medicare for all. I noticed a couple dumb fucks were tweeting that out. Um, I think that Wreckful had like a very, very, very real battle with depression. And like it, it sounds condescending to say. But like it, it feels like if you if you don't know, you just don't know. Um, it's impossible to explain to somebody that hasn't felt it um, what it's like. You, you know, like you can you can use analogies, um, like yeah. I, but yeah, um, you're saying it was a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody around him kind of felt that way, or anybody that was paying attention to him. Uh, what do you make of his last few tweets on Twitter? How did he go from proposing on Twitter to dying? Um, I mean, he was incredibly manic, but yeah, I mean, he can, he can go from like a super, super high to a super, super low. Um, I thought he was doing better with the Dr. K stuff and the Everland stuff coming out. Um, yeah, maybe. The problem is that I, I don't know, I don't know how, like, there are so many different analogies that I use to explain this. <sighs> um, like, the problem with Wreckful is that if we graph, like, happiness over time, like, the problem is that, like, with a, with a normal human being, Like, we have like these. Um, we, we like we we. <clears throat> I think most people live somewhere around here. Like something really good happens, you get a rare drop in a game, you get very happy, you get a new dog. Um, maybe like um maybe like a parent dies, right? It's very dark, very sad. Um, but like, eventually, with nothing happening, you you kind of you have this like baseline that you kind of return to. Um, and and the frustrating thing is that. People that are generally like um, <clears throat> people that are generally like normal people with normal functioning minds, um, normally they have like this baseline where if nothing bad and nothing good is happening to you, like regardless of what happens, you usually you kind of like settle out ar around here. And when I say happy, what I mean is like what I really mean is like I'm looking for a word called like purpose. 
Um, you feel like you want to be happy. You have like a drive where like, I really want to do things that make me happy. I don't like being sad. I want, I have like a drive to live basically, right? Most people are, are at around this, like they're decently happy at this baseline. Some people are a little bit sadder or whatever. Some people are a little lower, like hopefully people are around here. I'm up here. I love living every day. I'm very happy for it. Very grateful for it. Sometimes I get sad, um, you know, feed a lot in league, some shit, or whatever. But for the most part, my baseline is like pretty high. Um, the, the problem is that when when normal people talk to somebody like Recful, Recful's baseline is here. And every single day for him was a struggle to bring this up here. So whereas like if I'm here and I do a really good podcast episode, I'm so elated and then I'll come back down to normal. Or let's say I, you know, I get to play games with Nathan, like, oh, that's so cool. Or I get to see Melina. It's like, oh yeah, this is like, this is a really good life. Okay. I'm elated. I'm very happy for things. And then I settle back down to like, oh, cool. Time to do my next day. Um, for Recful, all of these nice things, whether it was seeing friends or doing his podcast or working on Everland, these were things that got him very temporarily out of his like no desire to live state. Um, but the baseline that he's returning to is always this total absence of a desire to live. Um, like, it, it, and this is like, when depressed people talk about like the struggle, this is what they're talking about. And one of the things that's really frustrating is that when normal people talk to you, normal people sometimes use phrases that feel hollow and empty, but a normal person doesn't mean it that way. They just don't understand. So like a normal person might say, listen, dude, you've got to fight through it. Like everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Well, the reason why a normal person says that is because after some indeterminate amount of time, a normal person will get back. Normal person might have the worst. Your fucking family dies. Your Joe Biden, your both your um, sons or whatever, like get killed. But, but eventually you will come back to here because that's just where your default state of mind is. Like you go back to being like, okay. And normal people have that experience. When you're talking to somebody that's down here though, things aren't always going to be okay. Like something dramatic has to change. And this... Like when you tell somebody like that, like, oh, dude, like it'll, this'll be okay. You know, like it, it, everything's going to be fine. It's like, no, no, that's just not true. No, they, that's not the, that's not their day-to-day -day experience, right? Most people have to go out of their way to be sad. And most depressed people have to go out of their way to be happy. Like, what do you think of his mushroom abuse? Do you think it helped or exacerbated the problems? It, may, it might maybe help them, maybe hurt them. I don't know. It seemed like it helped a bit. Um, yeah. So what has to change? Um, it, it has to be some deeper level drive that has to change. So the three things that I always said if I ever got into one of these states is like diet, exercise, and sleep that maybe lining those things up over some amount of time would start to like get the brain jogged back into gear or whatever. Um, like medication can help reset you for a little bit. Um, forms of therapy can help reset you, but like you have to like do something to dramatically change like the underlying chemistry of your brain. Um, what advice do you have for relatives or close friends who wanna help someone who's depressed? Um, for the people that I've known that are depressed, usually the best times to help them are usually like in the times when they're happy. The problem is that like, and this doesn't, this just doesn't make sense. Um, it doesn't make sense unless you've been here, but like, there are like, there are two types of people. Okay. There are people that there are three types of people. Okay. If we think about food. All right. Some people are full. They don't need to eat. And then other people are hungry and they need to eat, right? And when a hungry person needs to eat, they have a desire for food. So they eat, fills them up, and now they're not hungry, right? And these are like the two modes of existence that we assume everybody has, right? You're either not hungry, which is great, you're fine, or you're hungry and you wanna get food. But what's unfathomable to most people is there exists some people that will be incredibly hungry, but they don't have a feeling of hunger. Um, they need food and it's, they're deteriorating, um, but they just don't really want to eat. They just don't have that experience for it. Um, maybe you've seen this with like a dog or a cat that dies after it's like husband or wife or whatever cat partner 
or dog partner, like when they die and then the other dog like stops eating and it crawls off somewhere and dies or whatever because it doesn't really have the will to go on. Um, it's always easy to look at a person and be like, if you're hungry, um, if you're hungry, like, why aren't you just eating? And it's like, well, I'm not hungry. Um, I need food, but I don't know. I just don't even experience hunger. <laughs> like, I just don't have it. I don't know. Like, maybe I'll just rot away. Um, I don't even know why I would eat. I don't have that feeling for hunger at all. Um, and this is like the state that a lot of people that are really deep in depression feel where it's not like a matter of like, bro, why don't you fucking do something to pull yourself out of this? You need to do something to get happy. Well, it's not that they feel like, oh, well, like I do need to do something to make me feel happier. It's more just like, I don't even see the point. Like why? Like I, I don't, I don't feel a drive to better my mental state because you're just totally gone from that. That, that part of you is just not there. And that what I'm describing right there, like if you've experienced depression, you understand it completely. Um, if you haven't, it just sounds really stupid. Like what, what does it feel like to not feel anything? Or what does it feel like to not have no drive to be happy? Like this doesn't even make sense. It's so stupid. Like everybody, like nobody wants to be like miserable. Nobody wants to have like a bad experience. Like it's so fucking dumb. Um, and it is dumb, but like when, when, when this is your baseline, when you're down here, um, you, like, yeah, you're like, you're below the level of like, I hurt and I need to fix it. Like I have a, I've got a pain and I need to fix it to bring myself back up here. It's more just like something is wrong with me. Something feels broken. Um, but I don't even have like a drive to fix it. And everything around me is like so sad and so painful. And the idea of any of this ever getting better is like impossible. Um, fuck it, dude. Maybe I will just kill myself. Like it's never going to get better. Um, for some people, they've tried getting better for years. You might have hopped from SSRI to SSRI, and those can drive you even deeper if you have a bad experience with it. Um, you might try therapy. Therapists can be like teachers. Some of them are really good. A lot of them are really shit. Um, you've got to shop around a lot. The problem is that to take yourself from like a depressive state to like getting out of that requires the mind sometimes of somebody that is really driven, right? Like how I feel right now by a depression, well, of course I would do everything I could get out of it. But that's because I'm up here. I'm super driven every day to like make myself happy and to do things. But man, when you're down here, like what the fuck is even the point? Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. A lot of people are gonna talk about a lot of things. Um, I don't like to argue with people about this because I think most people don't understand this at all. So a lot of people are gonna be tweeting about how important it is to stop bullying people in line. I guess that's maybe that helps a little bit, I, but I don't think like LSF was the reason why Reckful killed himself. Um, LSF isn't the reason why Byron's brother killed himself. Um, these types of mental problems are something is just deeply wrong, like deeply corroded or rotted out of like a person's foundation to live. Um, I don't have the necessary. I don't understand why. I don't, I don't know the answer. Um, I don't know if we know the answer for sure yet about that, but yeah, it's um. It's a, yeah, it's really, really, really rough. Um, if to, to combat issues like this requires like a, a radical change, a radical shake from down here to bring somebody back up here. Like, and the support that you need to give somebody to do it is tremendous. Um, and for some people, the struggle feels never ending. Like every sing, it's like it's like going out and having to shovel your driveway every single day. Um, it's not like uh, it's not like you shovel it once and you're fucking done. Like most of us, because it doesn't snow every single fucking day for most of us. Usually, it snows once or twice. Shovel your driveway and you're done. But for these people, it snows every single day. And maybe a friend comes over and helps you once, and then you're done, right? You've got a depressed person. You talk to him once or twice, like okay, you're fine, right? And then you walk away. But they have to go through that uphill struggle every single day. Every single time they wake up, they have another battle, another day. And if they stop fighting at any point, then they just get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into like horrible habits of like just being totally mind fucked. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a rough one. Um, I don't know if it's a societal thing. Um, or, or what has to change, if it's like a culture thing. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's a hard one.
How do you help a depressed person without the energy to follow through on therapy? Um, well, there's two really challenging issues about helping depressed people. So the first issue is that you can't help a depressed person if they don't want to do something. Um, you just can't. Like they need to have either on a, on a moment of like um, clarity or euphoria or catch them on an upswing. They need to make the desire. They need to have the desire to make the effort to follow through with stuff. You can't do it for them. Um, that that's something that like maybe you can help them realize that they should get that on an upswing, but you can't like push them. Um, you can't. You, you yeah. It's they, it, that decision has to come from within. Um, the second thing is that, um, oh, thanks, not sorry for the sub. Um, the second thing is that, like, for normal people, a lot of the times it's not reasonable to demand of you that you take care of somebody like that. Um, because oftentimes you can put your own mental well being in harm's way by trying to assume responsibility for another person's state of mind. And you can't, you can't, you can't put yourself through that. Um, this is one of the reasons why you should never blame yourself if you have a friend or somebody that commits suicide. Like you can't put that on yourself to constantly take care of another person because at some point that's going to have like a great cost to yourself. Now, if you've got like a group of friends or like a support network where people can talk to each other, that's really great. That's good, but yeah. The Rotten Foundation thing is true. What do you think accounts for the massive rise in suicide rates in the past couple decades? More pressure on those that already have a shaky start. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's just, I don't I don't know if we're too far removed from what we're supposed to do as people. Um, I'm not sure. Um, like we're. We're, we're supposed to be outside a lot more. We're not supposed to be sitting down looking at screens. Um, we're supposed to be interacting more with other humans, like having like real life interactions and stuff. Um, I don't know, the, the thing is is that, um, uh, here, get triggered, biology is like a very soft science, okay? Biology is like one of those sciences for humans where it's like every little itty bitty thing you wanna study is gonna have 50 trillion different variables involved and it's almost impossible to isolate any one particular thing. Um, it's very, very, very difficult to do. So the problem is that like, when you start taking away things from somebody's life, it's hard to say how that's going to impact somebody. Like if, if you don't see as many people in real life as you're supposed to, it's hard to say like, how that impacts you. If you sit down all day and you don't like move your body around, just like being active like benefits you, your your, your mind, your heart, your lungs, so many different ways. Um, you know, even sleeping eight hours a night. Uh, I remember reading a few times because I did a lot of um, reading about Alzheimer's disease. My mom um, uh, was diagnosed with it. That like things like sleeping, um, not sleeping well throughout your entire life can be a huge predictor of like developing like earlier dementia and stuff. Um, yeah, but do you think the depression prevalent in youth has any correlation to the amount of responsibility slash stress young adolescents have to go through nowadays? Um, maybe, I'm not sure. Something is wrong. I don't know what it is though. If you could have forced him to follow some advice to try and help him, um, do you have any ideas? I mean, Rekful was kind of making all the right steps, right? Like he was getting help with therapists. He was trying to surround himself with more friends. He's a very hard person. Um, he was a very hard person to get along with in real life. I know that everybody's tweeting now that they loved him and they loved seeing him all the time, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is that Rekful was actually incredibly difficult to deal with in real life. Um, I've seen several people tweet out how much they love spending time with him, blah, 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 that have behind closed doors said that he's a huge pain in the ass to get along with. Um, I, I mean, I'll be frank about that. Of course, he was very, very difficult to get along with in real life. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, he, I mean, he was trying to make some of the right moves, like talking to Dr. K probably helped, um, being driven and having purpose for like the game that he was doing probably helped. Um, yeah. How are you so good at understanding this without firsthand experience? Um, I've listened to a lot of people talk about it. So I think I could describe it decently well, like when I was 30, but after my really big mushroom trip, I had a couple of bouts with like mental illness related things. And I think it gave me a lot of perspective. Uh, I think that's where most of my perspective comes from now is like post big mushroom trip when it comes to stuff like this. Oh man, dude. 
I did mushrooms last night and I had a headache waking up this morning and Melina calls me and I like, holy shit, dude, my mind was so fucking blasted this morning. Holy fuck. <clears throat> Man. How much did you do? I only did two grams, but I tried those fucking liquid mushrooms and um, they're not fun. Or may I don't know, maybe it's just me, dude. I had like, the trip was like, the trip was like, if this is not high, it was like, whoosh, whoosh, <laughs> where this time period was like one hour. It was like one hour of being like super fucking high and then whoosh, and then it came down immediately. And then the, the thing that sucks that I get really irritated about, I and I also told myself last night a million times I was never gonna do mushrooms again. <laughs> um, <laughs> because, dude, it's so hard. Oh God, I'm so horrible with it. Um, the liquid hits you faster and harder and shorter. I hadn't eaten it all yesterday either, um, which was kind of good because I, didn't, I wasn't hungry at night after doing mushrooms. And I weighed 139 this morning, so I'm at a new, it's been a long time since I've been in the 130s. Um, did you do shrooms alone? No, I was with a friend. The one, actual, one hour actually feel like an hour? Nah, it never does. The one hour always feels like, I'd say this time it felt like it was like 10 or 12 hours. It's, it always seems impossibly long. The thing that I hate is that like, LSD is so easy going up. Oh my God, dude, LSD. I need to do LSD again. That's what I really need. LSD is so easy going up and so nice going down. But mushrooms is like, <laughs> dude, like every time, even when I did one gram of mushrooms with a um, fucking wreck full, it's like, oh fuck, I'm getting high. <sighs> okay. <sighs> and then doing even two grams last night, it's like, oh, okay, we're fucking, uh, God, it's so brutal going up. Oh my God. Um, but like, there's this, there's this such an awesome area where once you've gotten through this brutal fucking come up, there are like these, uh, there are like these areas where you're in like you're in like another world, and you're totally lucid, you're totally clear minded, but you're in like another dimension, like another space, and that area is like so cool and so clear and so awesome. But on these liquid mushrooms, I was there for like five minutes, and then I'm like dropping in and out of it. It sucks, but. I wasn't clear minded at all on LSD. Really? I want I wanted to play music when I was um <laughs> when I was doing mushrooms, but I couldn't do it, dude. I was so with the person I was with I remember the person I was with at one point they were having like problems because they were having like some dark parts of their trip. And I had the thing, it's like, okay, I should talk to this person. And I couldn't. And I was like trying to crawl out of my room, like away from them, because I was like, dude, I can't deal with your shit right now. It's too much. And I'm like trying to crawl away. Oh shit. But whatever. That's fuck me. Bipolar uh, shouldn't take shrooms, can severely worsen the mental health. The depressive phase can be extremely rough without meds, as Recful didn't take. Had a bipolar suicide patient at the ER today, 17 year olds. The problem with like psychiatric drugs is that like, it's hard to say whether or not it's like, um, I, I don't know how to like talk about like psychedelics and shit with depressed people. It seems like mushrooms genuinely did help Recful. And LSD genuinely did help Reckful. Because LSD brought Reckful's baseline, not, I shouldn't say his baseline, but like when he was, his drugged baseline was like pretty high. Like we talked so much. Um, Cause he would always ask me about like motivation and stuff. And we talked so much, like we did LSD, we did mushrooms or whatever. And his high states were like my normal states. Where like on LSD, like I think I remember I was driving him back from the airport one day and he like started crying when we were driving down the freeway um, because he just like saw the sunset. And he was like, oh my God, like this is actually like so beautiful and so nice. Like, I don't know why I don't appreciate this normally ever. Um, and that was just on like, I think like 150 micrograms of LSD. It wasn't even that much. Um, but he always had like so much interest for the world, but it was up the, when I met him, it was only when he was on like either LSD or mushrooms. That was the only time he seemed to be like a normal, well-adjusted person. But other than that, his baseline was just horrendously low. Um, yeah, people wanna say that like doing the mushrooms kill him or whatever, but I don't, I don't think so. Like, Do you think Becca was that driven person that gave Reckful's baseline upswings? Um, I think Becca and Reckful had a very unhealthy relationship, and I think it's super ultra unfair to expect Becca to be Reckful's lifeline and savior. I don't think that's a fair expectation to put on Becca at all. I hope she doesn't blame herself for anything that happened. I don't know what kind of person she is that much, but it's not her fault that he did what he did. The issue is that you have the come down afterwards. Do you not experience that? Well, Rekfa was doing mushrooms like every fucking day, so. What 
Wait, you drove Ohio? Um, no, I'm too scared to drove Ohio. He's on LSD. I wasn't. Do you think MDMA would be a worse choice than LSD? Um, I can't. I can't say at all. I don't know how LSD affected Reckful's mind. It made him like a normal person, but it seemed to have like Reckful's experience on LSD is way different than mine. I don't know if MDMA would help me while depressed, but I feel like everybody. I feel like at this point, because of my experiences with the drugs, every experience that I have with a drug is like pretty personal now. Um, my experience on MDMA isn't like very high or mind altering. It just makes me very, 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 very loving. Holy shit. And so, ugh. Um, but I don't know if that would help me if I was like depressed or sad. I'm not sure. Um, MDMA doesn't really get you like, MDMA doesn't like get your mind high. Um, like it's not psychedelic or it might be slightly, but it doesn't feel that way at all. Um, MDMA is more just like, a, um, it, like, it absolutely crushes any barrier that you have between you and another person. Like if you took MDMA with somebody that you absolutely fucking hated, like you would be telling like, dude, like, oh my God, like I know why you do what you do. Like I understand like why you're mean or whatever. Like I blah, blah, blah. You would just be, it's like an unimaginable fucking like, <clears throat> like barrier destroyer. It's insane. I think it would be very hard for two people to do MDMA together and hate each other while tripping. I don't know if that's possible. Is it possible to have a bad MDMA trip? Um, I think if you take too much, it can fuck you up super hard. I had my first experience with extreme depression after MDMA for three days straight. Worst feeling, I can't begin to imagine what it's like. Um, I've heard that if you have bad come downs from MDMA, it's because you're getting bad shit. Uh, but I don't know if that's true or not. My MDMA come downs are always really good. Um, the next day I'm usually just like really chill and really mellow. I think I've streamed both days after my MDMA trips and both days I was like pretty mellow, uh, but not like in a sad way. I was just like super chilled. Um, from what I've read, it's good to wait like four to five weeks between MDMA trips too. Some people that use it will use it every fucking day while raving and shit. That's probably not good. What are your thoughts on someone like Hassan or others who had very little relationship with Recful Stream, the news, and talk about it in regards to lack of access to medical coverage? It makes me so furious. Um, I don't want to say anything about Hassan because I hope Hassan wouldn't do that. I don't think Hassan was really talking about like medical coverage or whatever relating to Recful, or at least I hope not. Um, I mean, for the people that did that, I mean, good for them that Recful died and killed himself because they get something to talk about to push an agenda. I know that's like really important to some people, but um, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, people always. I think that like Reckful's death is like, uh, I, I think it's like a good opportunity to discuss mental health in general. But I mean, obviously it's not like you can, um, I mean, it's not like he was lacking money for healthcare, right? Like the guy had infinite amounts of cash to, to burn on whatever he wanted. And he, like, um, you can't, it sounds so stupid to say, and if I would have heard myself saying this 12 years ago, you can't buy happiness. Like there are some problems you can't just spend your way out of. How do you feel about social media and its relationship to depression, especially in the younger generations? Everything I've read about social media um, and younger people is like universally bad. Um, it seems to be very, very, very negative. I don't know what else there is to say about that. Do you have any experience with depersonalization? Unfortunately, yes. Well, I use all three words interchangeably because I've heard them all used interchangeably, even though somebody in chat is about to type, well, actually, Destiny, they're distinctly different. I've heard depersonalization, derealization, and disassociation all used interchangeably. I think even on Wikipedia, they were listed as the same one point. But whatever that feeling is, um, I used to get that all the time after my panic attacks, after my mushroom trip. Um, it was a very, very, very weird, queer kind of feeling. Like, after, um, after I would have a panic attack, like, everything around me would feel very, very unreal and my existence would feel very strange. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know, it was, it's very, very hard for me to explain. All of my problems though are very boring. They all revolve around like whether or not I exist, unfortunately. It's not like, it's not like, um, like cool things, like why am I sad for some reason? <laughs> like it's all like, it just gets very strange where I feel like nothing makes sense in my life or I feel like very removed from my own existence. It's a very, very, very weird feeling. It's really hard to explain.
We would recommend an environment to take acid. I don't really want to talk about drugs all the time. Set, um, scene setting, scenery setting, people. Is there any story about Recful that you haven't shared that you would maybe like to share? It feels really weird. I mean, I have some personal experiences with Recful, but I don't know why I would tell them to you unless I want some, some social validation for like time that I spent with him so that you can understand like how sad I am so that you can validate me for it. That's a very inhuman feeling I have. I don't know. Maybe it helps some people. It feels very fucking weird to me though. But I don't know. I'm not, I shouldn't say that. I'm not trying to like make fun of people that do it. It's just like the idea of like, like I have a bunch of pictures with me and Melina and Rick on my phone that I know I could post on Twitter and get like a bunch of engagement on. It seems like very fucking strange. Like I don't give a fuck. I don't care what any of you guys think about me or my relationship with Rick Fall. Like it's, I don't know. Ugh. I don't know, it's weird. But, but I maybe it helps people. I don't know. Fuck, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I, we're not talking about that. Do you feel that people and streamers focusing on making the community better after Rickfield's death being the best way to go about the situation with depression instead of focusing more directly on depression in general? Um, seems kind of dumb to start talking about how to better the community being the right thing to do. Um, I mean, I think that like bettering communities can help. I think it'd be cool if people started doing that. Um, I think it would be good if people started doing that. We'll see if that actually happens. Um, the problem is that like, I've said this before, the problem is that like a lot of stuff that you need to change is like very minor or like more sub, not subversive. Um, subtle like and it gets to areas of behavior that people think are dumb changing and don't want to change like this might be an example right guys we need to address racism in the community and everybody's like true no more saying the n-word we shouldn't lynch black people it's like okay what about like spamming try hard like every time you see like a black person on the screen or like somebody steals something or somebody talks about like shoes and it's like hold on now is this really a big deal blah 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 like nobody actually like the the reason why I don't like a lot of the times when people talk about how like oh we need to change this behavior it's like well not really like nobody gives a fuck if you go on Twitter and say like stop telling people to kill themselves but, like, nobody was supporting that before like Nobody, like, there's not very many people. Like, this is a very small minority of communities that actually do this. Like, overall, though, we engage in a lot of harmful behavior that we think is, like, okay. Um, like, the only behavior we ever call out is the most extreme behavior. But then, like, that's it, you know? Like, go look at, like, any Alinity thread or whatever that's ever posted on. Or a really, really good example. Um, and I saw this the other day, too. Like, people talk about, like, problematic behavior. All they want to talk about is the most obscene stuff. Nobody's going to talk about the literal fucking two-inch dick incel fodder that was being posted when people found out that Ninja's ex-girlfriend was a big black cock that threatened Ninja's fucking, or Ninja's wife or whatever. Like, that shit was fucked, dude. Like, and you knew that there was some nasty fucking incel undercurrent to all of those posts, you know? Um, oh my God, that was disgusting as fuck. And those upvoted comments were unbelievable. This happened like yesterday, by the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it, I, I don't give a fuck. Most people are dumb. I don't really care about your brave comments telling people not to kill each other. Like, or whatever, like, congratulations, dude. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, like, I think that people could be nicer in general. Um, I think I make a decent effort. I think my community is, like, decently nice. I try to, like, hold them to, like, a higher standard. I think I could do a better job, but I feel like, um, I feel like a lot of Twitch communities are super, super, super ultra brutal. Holy shit. I know that like when I go into any other Twitch community, I don't give a fuck, so I'm lucky. But like if I engage with any other big streamer, um, oh my god, dude, their chats go fucking wild on me, dude. It's insane. Holy shit. The comments about fucking Nathan, about my son, or about like shit about my life or whatever, that shit just fucking flies crazy. Um, yeah, if I was bothered by that, I'd probably complain about that more. I don't really give a fuck, but... I think that um, people are asking about like, how do you deal with like bullying and depression? Like, I, I, I feel like um, man, I, I wish I could um, 
I need, I don't have like the psychology background. I feel like there is like distinctly two different types of like depressions going on. Like the, the kind of depression from like bullying and all that shit online, like, and the impact that has on somebody is markedly different from the type of experience that Recful had or people with like depression have. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't know, but I don't think that like bullying online can cause the type of like clinical depression, chemical mind fuck that was Recful's everyday existence. I think these are fundamentally different things. Um, not to say that one is good or one is bad, but I think it's important to some extent to recognize the difference. Just because we stop bullying people online doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna feel better, you know? Um, yeah. That's the scary part. A man that smart and that wealthy couldn't escape depression. Hard pill to swallow for us more average people, is it not? Um, not necessarily. I mean, how intelligent you are really doesn't have much to do with like how like depressed or not depressed. Like, Rightful is one of the smartest people that I know. Um, maybe the smartest person I know. I'm trying to think. I might know somebody smarter than him. If Sean Carroll counts. He was probably smarter than Rightful. Like, Rightful is incredibly, very, very gifted at problem solving. He's very good at that. Um, but yeah, the mind stuff was just, the problem is that like, that stuff on your mind is like, it's on a deeper level. Um, like you can arrange, you know, like deck chairs on, on a boat as much as you want, but if you're sinking, you're sinking. Like you can't do anything uh, above deck, like you're fucked. And the, like he was sinking for a long, long, long time. And no matter how well he had like his intellectual shit put together, his emotional shit was just rotted at the core. Um, and you know, it's incredibly sad. I don't know. Do you feel that you could have done something? Um, yeah, of course I could have, but I'm gonna sound like really cold, but like, I mean, it's not my responsibility. Like our last DMs, I think was, he was asking, he told me and Melina that if we moved out, he would pay for the apartment like upstairs um, if we were to move in, cause he liked hanging out with us. But um, I, like I, my job in life isn't to take care of him. So I mean like, I mean, it sucks, but like that's not like a burden that I'm obligated to take. I, I guess maybe some people would blame themselves for that, but like, I don't, I don't, I don't have that obligation. Um, I mean, it's sad, of course. I mean, I like spending time with Rockfall. I think it was really cool, but he couldn't get prescribed then because of his brother. I mean, I bet he could. Um, I mean, if you tell somebody I'm gonna kill myself if I don't get a prescription 100%. for this, like the reason why they don't give you the prescription is because they're scared you'll kill yourself. But if you're gonna kill yourself anyway, I mean, you could probably get a prescription for him. Yeah, you, would, you can't do shrooms or LSD well in SSRIs, yeah. I don't think killing himself was planned to that extent, though. It was a reaction to the Twitter shit. You, we don't know that. We have no idea if that's true. Um, I think that there are multiple points in Reckful's life where he easily could have killed himself, and he just barely didn't. Um, that was my personal experience with him. I seriously doubt that that Twitter thing, that was the reason why he killed himself. Um, I, I, I don't think you could pin it on that one thing. Like, I think that the last part, the last like two or three years of Reckful's life has been like a like a, the smallest tip could have like he could have just fucking said like I'm gonna kill myself and like done it um, to to try to like blame it on like oh it was the Twitter thing today like that's the the setup point like I mean like it's kind of true but like it's like somebody that can bench 225 it's like throwing five more pounds like onto their thing and saying that like oh five pounds made him like drop the weight and it's like well no it was like all the other weight on the on the bar already like he was already like Reckful was like Reckful was mentally pushed to the brink for like the past like three or four years at least like he was like already there for so long like any small little thing like the same thing that made him tweet that shit could have been the same feeling that made him kill himself um the idea that like that tweet like made him kill himself for the response or something or like yeah could you share just how deeply lonely he was it's telling how people master true emotions behind normal behavior but his loneliness was so deep his normal behavior is asking people to live in a free ten thousand dollar apartment so he would have companions yeah he actually offered to pay for I think he offered to pay for me and Molina completely. That was how much he wanted us to move down to that apartment. Oh yeah, when did your lease end? You said, I'm gonna get an apartment identical to mine just for guests, two floors up for mine. Do you wanna come live in it for a while? I want some friends around. Um, you don't have to pay all that, whatever you wanna pay. Do you wanna come? I can get it almost instantly on April 18th. You don't have to pay anything right away. Come test it out. You can live it for free for a month. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, he was like, he was pretty desperate for 
quarantine gonna go on so fucking long i can't live like this i need some social interaction good restaurants are still delivering i'm eating sushi right now i'll chill with you when you stream whatever are you thinking about it yeah he was like super super desperate for some sort of like any kind of like con he needed but the thing was like again like he needed like constant interaction um he needed like constant interaction with other people it was like the only thing and i guess like only you know I don't want to say only with some people, like I'm drinking myself off or whatever. Like, but there were some people that were full, like held in high regards that like made him feel like ba like his like better when he got to like hang out and talk with them. But Do you think there's a moral right to suicide? Do you think it's wrong to physically stop people from killing themselves? I've had friends that refused to go to therapy because they were worried they would get put in institutions. Um, I don't know what the answer to that question is. I've actually thought about that for a long time. Because um, my best friend killed himself when I was 19 or 20. I don't remember when. Um, I don't remember what age I was. But I thought about that for a long time because I wondered, like, oh, I wonder if I should have called the police and turned him in or whatever. But I still don't know the answer to that. The problem is that, like, when people are confiding those feelings in you, it's like some of the most personal, um, it's like some of the most personal stuff they can confide in you. And to take that and run to the police with it, um, like if they just get institutionalized and then they kill themselves later, like I, I don't know if that's like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you should adopt a moral system that more adequately answers that question. Okay. Um, yeah, but if someone like Rec Full that has had so many people that love him feels lonely, then doesn't that mean people who don't have that many people to support them are kind of fucked? Yeah, it's possible. But, yeah, I don't know. There's not much more to say, unfortunately. Um, mental health is really hard. Uh, I, I tweeted something similar to this. Like, there's not like a... Um, a lot, of, a lot of the problems that we have today, like, in life are really hard. Like, we've solved a lot of the easy shit. Like, generally, we don't worry about starving to death. Now we worry about overeating. Um, generally, we don't worry about working ourselves to death. Now we worry about, um, you know, like, having fulfilling lives. Like, these questions are more complicated and, and more difficult to answer, unfortunately. Um, for somebody like Recful, like, just stopping internet bullying probably wouldn't be enough. You know, just doing one thing, posting a suicide hotline or calling your friends is not enough. Like you have to do like a lot. Like this stuff is like hard work. Um, if you know somebody that's depressed, like the most that you can do is be there for them as much as possible. Uh, when they're in a good mood, encourage them to get help. Um, remind them of how nice it feels to be in a good mood. Sometimes they take it, I don't want to say they take it for granted, but like it, it like it can, I don't know. It felt like when talking to Recfall, like when he was in a really good mood, it was easier to talk to him about like getting long-term help stuff that it seemed like he was more like motivated to do things to stay in that mood. Um, really all you can do is like support your friends as much as they can. If you feel they're in that mood um, and then do what you can to help them like get through things. Uh, don't, don't assume that because somebody's in a good mood, they fix their shit. Um, those s moods can be like, they, those moods can be swingy, they can be temporary, and they can go right back to as low as they were before, and it will feel even worse every time they get there. Um, because one of the big problems you have too with people that get very mood swingy is that as soon as they feel happy, um, even their happiness is vexed because they feel like they could become sad at any point in time with no explanation as well. Um, I've known personally two people that have had that problem, that even when they were happy, 
they were actually starting to get sad because they knew they were going to be depressed again and they couldn't really even enjoy their happy states. It's kind of like counting down the minutes until you're done with like a massage or something and you're just waiting for it to end. Like for a lot of people, that's what their happy times feel like. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's like a, yeah, it's just like a constant support thing and it's hard and it's a lot of work and it's constant work. For some people, it's like a lifetime's worth of work, so, but... <clears throat> Um, yeah, don't misconstrue anything I've said. Um, you should definitely try therapy. You should try SSRIs, whatever the fuck it takes to get you out of that state. So I'm incredibly positive. Do it. Um, yeah. Imagine Pokey coming out defending Fed after everything on, on the Ratchler. Oh shit, that's right. Does that do with Pokey moving out? Wait, did Pokey move out?